the brief history of computers and computing devices. In this module, we'll learn about different types of peripheral devices, about the input and output categories, and about drivers. Peripheral devices are external or internal devices that connect to a computer to add more functionalities that are not included by default. Peripherals are normally categorized into three main device groups. The first group is the input devices group. These devices are used to transmit data into the computer, such as a keyboard or a mouse. The next group are output devices. These devices are used to retrieve data from the computer and express them outside, such as a monitor or a loudspeaker. And the last group is input and output devices. These devices can perform both input and output operations, meaning they can transmit and receive data at the same time, such as printer scanners, CD-DVD burners, or storage devices. Now that the difference between input and output devices is clear, let's start reviewing the most common input devices. So first we have the mouse and the keyboard. These two allow us to control the cursor and issue commands on the computer directly. We have microphones, which are used to convert sound into data, scanners, which convert images into data, trackpads for drawing, joysticks for gaming, webcams for converting image into data, and smart card readers for industrial use. We then have fingerprint readers, which are used for security and forensics, barcode scanners that we can see pretty much in every supermarket and store, and MIDI keyboards, which allow us to record sounds and store them as data. Now let's talk about output devices. First, we have the monitor that converts data on our PC to video and images. We have loudspeakers that convert data into audio, headphones, which do pretty much the same thing, printers and plotters for printing out data on paper, projectors, which serve the same purpose as monitors, and USB lamps, which convert computer electricity into light. As previously mentioned, some devices can be used both for input and output operations at once. For example, a CD and DVD burner can both read from and write to a disk, so it qualifies as input and output. Printer scanners can also both print and scan, so these two qualify as input and, out and output as well. Fax devices or uh, VOIP phone devices, which are telephony systems that use the internet. Touch screens that both display data and allow us to run tasks at the same time. Uh, USB flash drives, SD cards, or any other storage device would count as both input and output device. We understand devices can be connected to the computer to add more functionalities, but how does the computer or our operating system know how to detect these devices, communicate with them and operate them? For this purpose, our computer and the attached device need to speak the same language. And that's where drivers come into place. So what are drivers? Operating systems do not necessarily know by default how to communicate and exchange data with your devices. In order for an operating system to learn the language of your newly connected device and be able to detect it and communicate with it, a specific program needs to be installed to serve as a medium between the attached device and the operating system. This program is called a driver. Drivers are sets of files that, once installed, can allow both internally and externally attached devices to interact with the operating system. This applies to printers, monitors, USB drives, and so on. All attached devices can be listed by opening the Windows Device Manager. Each item on the list has a drop-down arrow with one or more devices listed. A right-click on a device will list the options to update, disable or uninstall a driver, scan the connectors for any hardware changes, and view the device properties. In the device properties, we will find general device information, the driver's details, and the device event log. To list all the installed drivers on your operating system, run the command driver query or driver query slash v for verbos output from the Windows command line, as shown on the right. Windows 10 has a full library of class drivers that allow most devices to interact with the operating system without requiring any additional software. This library is copied during Windows setup to a protected system folder, which means most devices will work immediately after Windows setup or once Windows finishes installing updates. In Windows 10, drivers and their additional data are typically stored in the directory C Windows System32 driver store. 
In the driver store, we can find different driver files within the folder, such as .sys driver files, .inf driver setup files, .pnf precompiled inf files, XML manifest files, and so on. A combination of all of the above gives us a single driver package, which contains all the necessary files to install and detect a device by the operating system. Just for the example, we can open the Device Manager either by right-clicking the Start button and selecting Device Manager, just like this, or right-clicking the Start button, selecting Run, and then typing this command. So, devmgmt.msc. DevMGMT stands for Device Management, MSC stands for Microsoft Console. Let's click OK. And when we open the Device Manager, we can see just a bunch of devices connected to my computer. Monitors, for instance. We can see I have two monitors. I have one mouse, one keyboard. If I right-click, I can either update a driver or uninstall it. I can scan for changes on my hardware and I can see the properties. So I have a general tab, a drivers tab, where I can see the driver details, like the location of the .sys files. I can update the driver manually or uninstall it. If I uninstall it, of course, I won't be able to use my keyboard anymore. If I update the driver, then I get to select either to update the driver by looking for it online automatically. This is something Windows can do. or to browse my computer for driver software if I have downloaded my manually. So if I click search automatically, it will start looking online for the, the USB driver uh, for my keyboard. And as you can see, I already have the best driver installed for this device. So that's the device manager. But we want to go even deeper and use the command prompt. So we can either open it from the icon right here and then run as administrator. Or uh, a right click on the start button and then select command prompt as admin. And this is the command prompt. And I want to query the system for drivers, so I will type the command driver query. And as you can see, it will give me a list of all the installed drivers on my operating system. And you can see that they have four columns, one for the module name, one for the display name, the driver type, and the link date. But if I want more information, let's say that I want the output to include much more information, a verbose output. So, same command, driver query slash v. So driver query slash v. This will give me a verbose output. But as you can see, the output is not very clear. It's a bit messy. So there is a way to export this output to a text file or even to a CSV file for Excel. And we can type the same command, slash v, and then we export it to C and we call it test dot CSV, let's say. And we can do the same, but create a TXT file. OK, so now let's go to the file system. See. And we can see these two files right here, test.txt and test.csv. This will open it by default in Excel. And as you can see, it's not extremely clear, but all the information is at least organized in a way. If you look at the other output, the text output, you'll see that it's much better organized. And it's more clear, and I think that this is the best way to export the driver query. That's all for today. Thank you very much.